Well, how's it going, guys? So today we're going to be looking ahead at the uh, under-21 European semi-final between Germany and England. We're going to be looking ahead at the match, ahead at the personnel formations and predictions for the match, and what I think might happen, and how either side may change certain things within their team, such as personnel or formations, to accommodate the opposition. So, firstly, we'll. Uh, Look at England, and England have been playing with a 4-4-2 diamond um, with split strikers in this competition. Uh, I'll get more onto that in a while. So left back Chilwell, two centre backs, Mawson, Chambers, right back Holgate, defensive mid Chalaba, left centre Baker, right centre Ward Prowse, attacking midfielder is John Swift, and the two split strikers is Nathan Redmond and Damari Gray. So what do I mean by split strikers? And I'll show you what I mean right now. So we'll let this play out here. And what split strikers essentially means is that they don't necessarily play wide on the touchline as wingers, but they play just inside the opposition's full backs and allows them hopefully to pick the ball up in half spaces on the turn and get dribbling. And cutting inside, you know, um, Redmond and Gray are renowned for their dribbling and also their ability to cut in from wide areas. So this does suit them to a certain extent. Um, at the start of the competition, it was actually Redmond that was playing on the left, Gray was on the bench, and Tammy Abraham was the one who was playing as the right striker. But this was not working in this system because... Tommy Abraham is a, is a more recognised striker that plays in the box. You know, he's not a someone that's going to drift wide and is going to beat players. So Abraham was not working in this system. Um, Gray was brought in, um, I think it was in their last game, and um, played a very, very uh, good game. So Redmond and um, Gray are split strikers here. And uh, the only problem here really is is the width on the touchline, which has to be provided by the fullbacks Holgate and Chilwell. Now Chilwell in this competition has been playing playing some great football and, and has been really energetic up that right side or up that left side, sorry. And uh, Holgate has done similar up the right. So that's England for the moment. We'll discuss more about England's um, in possession later but for now i want to discuss the germans in in possession so germany they play with a four two three one and uh, these players here for germany are very very renowned players let me just play this on for you here so this is the four two three one and what you're going to see most typically is the hood actually is the one who drip and um, drops in between those center backs acts as the playmaker for Germany, he's very good on the turn, can receive that ball with his back to the play and turn in and, and play some very quality passes. Um, Ireland typically comes off onto either side, either the left hand side or the right hand side to create um, passing triangles on those sides. In this instance, he's on the left, so he's going to be creating a passing triangle with that full back with the left winger, Meyer if he comes across you know, Selke there. So, the who's going to drop in, first of all, is what you're going to notice. And uh, Ireland coming up just to create these sorts of triangles, with a triangle there and, and a diamond. So, there's a passing triangle there. So, it's all about triangles for the Germans. They're a team that loves to pass the ball, even if they're in and under pressure from the opposition. They are encouraged by Kunz, the uh, head coach, to, um, to pass that ball out from the back um, as much as possible and not to gift the opposition possession by um, having to clear it uh, recklessly or traditionally. Okay, so there's the Germans now with their 4 2 3 1, but let me show you what you, you can expect in. Uh, in the game so this is what typically happens okay max meyer is the roaming 
playmaker, the attacking mid for Germany. He is essentially given a role to to roam, try and pick up that ball. What I've seen Meyer do a lot is that when he's being marked by a defensive mid, is, is he, he kind of drops into this kind of a space to create a 4-3-3. He may also drop off into the half spaces to support. So he's a very um, good player on finding space. He, he finds space very well. I, I like that move where he drops in to create that 4-3-3. Uh, maybe useful here um, in this specific game. So that's what Meyer does. Arnold obviously coming here to create this triangle. Now, on the right side, very important, Wazer is the one, he kind of makes these incisive runs while Gnabry hugs the touchline on the other side. What Germany want to do is, Gnabry is a very good dribbler of the ball, and Gnabry is good in 1v1s. So this um, left back here, had, you don't really see him getting forward too much, although on occasions he does get forward and Gnabry can cut in side while uh, Gerhard provides the whip but most uh, most of the time Gnabry is, is left 1v1 out here and he's not really given much support and that's just to isolate the uh, English fullback against Gnabry you know these are kind of cuts in um, from the other wing and it kind of reminds you of a Man United sort of um, movement because one Mata was doing this for Man United throughout the season where he was coming in and getting involved in, in these central areas and then Valencia was breaking up the right with the left back sort of Darmian kind of staying back with Martial hugging the wing so it's very reminiscent of of, uh, of Man United sort of play but uh, yeah this is what happens anyway Toljan he gets forward um, a very attack minded player so he, he's the one that breaks, Reeser cuts in onto that. Um, centre back causes the full back to tuck in with him. So that's what Germany do now. So with um with England's formation here, the most important thing really is is uh, to note is that uh, they are outnumbered out wide, but they're very, very strong through the middle. So if anything England want to be forcing that ball in the middle all the time. And it's very important for the full backs and the, and the, the wide centre mids on either side to, to uh, not allow that them passes to get in the middle. Although they are provided some safety with Chalaba in here protecting. You know, so it's all about keeping that ball wide, as, as far wide as possible for England. When, when, when coming against the Germans here, they will have an, an overload, especially with Toljan breaking on, because typically what what will happen for England is the Mary Gray doesn't really come back into a left mid position. He, he stays up and presses on, so that would be a bit of an issue for Baker and Chilwell to try and deal with that. You know, Chilwell will he will he pass um, the winger on? to his, his centre-back and Chilwell to go out and press the full-back or will Chilwell come inside with the with the winger and Baker have to press out. So it's, it's a bit of a conundrum really for, uh, for the English what they're going to do here and whether they really want to sit Gray back in this game and, and sit with Redmond. But if they decide to press, this might be how to do it. So let me just show you what, the, what might look like there. So that's the way Germany might look like when they're in possession of the ball. Um, either of the centre halves. So there you go. Now here we're going to introduce some of the zonal marking in this uh, England side. This is, the, this is the first two thirds of the pitch, the defence and the midfield. I'll show you the attack now in a moment. But uh, yeah, so Chalaba with this triangle here, just providing that protection there um, for his two centre-backs. Don't know if Taliban will want to follow Max Meyer out if he, if he goes out to join that midfield, but uh, Taliban will 
I have to protect this two centre backs either way. This is what the diamond formation is all about. The three press on. This is a perfect way to press the ball high up. And the Germans will not like this one bit. Um, because they, they do want to press um, to pass it out from the back. So when they're being asked to pass the ball out from the back, when you have a, a three versus three in the first third, maybe a four versus three, if you add the full back there, um, you're, you're going to have a lot of problems here if you're Germany to, to pass this ball out. So before I play any more, I just want to show you some of the zones. So uh, typically in a diamond formation, you, you would have seen Swansea doing it um, in the second half of the year with, with Clement. Uh, Clement came in and he implemented a, a diamond formation. He started off playing a 4-5-1, but then he started to kind of press a U and, and Llorente up with Sigurdsson playing through the middle. It was very successful for them. It's it's um, something that, that you can go man for man with, but a lot of it is zonal as well. And I, in, in this sort of formation that, that, um, that Germany will be playing, it's it's uh, quite useful for England to go zonal because you'll have Arnold coming either side kind of, of, uh, of the midfield here. And the hood won't really um, be um, pressing on to, to the other free wide midfielder for England, he, he drops in to receive that ball short. So that that'll be Swift's man. The free man here for Germany is the full back. Either full back if Gerald wants to press on here, he can get up with Poy and they'll they'll be free out wide if they want to play those balls out into those areas. So you know, the, the zones here, Chilwell's zone they, is in the yellow, that's Mawson's zone, the chamber zone, um, and then Hoge. Notice how the centre-back zones are slightly smaller. This is why uh, this formation is so effective, because you have three players in this kind of an area, and it's very compact in there, so any passing in that area very very difficult out wide the full backs are more left generally than your center backs so you can you can expect them to get out and be able to press that ball wherever it may be so there you go now you can see razors coming into um, Mawson's zone here as well the Chalaba his zone really is is that red circle there and his main job is just to protect those two centre backs and stop passes getting in to uh, Max Meyer and if at all possible stop the ball getting into Selka also. If he can do those two jobs, he's really, really playing a good game. So there's Baker's own also covering the width of the pitch. That depends on whether Chilwell is coming in to mark uh, Weiser to leave the free man. And then Baker will have to go out here because Gray will be pressing on to the centre back. So also your two wide midfielders, Ward Prowse and Baker, have to be very elect players because they're really being asked to run out there if they have to or to cover in around if Chelwell goes. It's a very dynamic formation and it depends on where the ball is and also depends where the players are. Whereas a lot of communication. Believe me, when this is done correctly, this is a very, very good um, system to play. And uh, Clement was successful with it. And it seems like Buterai is um, being successful with it also because England have not lost a game in this competition yet. So it's uh, proving a treat so far. So let's give this ball here to centre-back, Kemp. So the Germans here... Uh, once played this out from the back, Kempf, Stark, the Hood are the three initialising sort of players. Now, Kempf can take this ball here and he can hit this one out to Toyan. You know, the question of, of Kempf really is, how is your long passing? Because if this is a few yards behind, he's going to hit that out for a throw in. 
if he hits this few yards to um, tempt Chilwell, Chilwell can easily head that ball into the channel and Gray can run into that channel very quickly. So I'm not really sure how um, confident Kemp will be to, to hit this pass if he has to. So maybe he might play it to Shirahal who will um, will receive pressure from, from Redmond. And uh, that's the thing, you know. When it comes to this halfway line, this is where the pressure is is um, passed over to your next player. This is what I like about the diamond, is that you, know, you have these zones, that halfway line there, that's... Uh, that's the next zone, that's the next zone. So it's a very organised formation. This ball by Kemp they hit out there and Chilwell is the closest man so he can go and press. It's all about who's closer to the ball. So on the on the pitch, what you'd really be looking for is these from England, is these two uh, wide centre mids. They're just outside of that um, outside of that um, circle, uh, the centre circle, with the attacking mid and, and defensive mid. They're kind of in line with the halfway line, hopefully, or with the um, halfway spot, and that means they're in the centre of the pitch. You have to use the pitch markings in modern football. This is how you be organised, you know. Whole game here. Just on the outside of this of the box, with with uh, the same being asked of of Chilwell. Although you know what, they can tuck in around, but it's just it's a it's a big burst of speed that they can tuck inside the box, but it's a big burst of speed that you need to get out there. Then, so I think you have to be more expansive with your fullbacks when you're playing this, because the centre of the pitch, let's be fair, is going to be covered up. Um. The wide strikers, the split strikers, they're just stopping the passes going in to the likes of Gnabry and, and uh, Gray is kind of stopping this pass into Toyan. So it's stopping that ball being played short into a wide area immediately. Because let's be fair, if Kemp plays this ball to Gerhard, Redmond can press, but then also Ward Prowse will be able to press on, and so will Holgate and Chambers on to Selka. So they'll, they'll be very ready for that pass to, to go down the line because all get will be tight, he'll be tight, he'll be tight. So any pass that'll be played then once that ball's in Jerhal's feet is, is going to be a risky ball. So Jerhal will probably have to play it back Kemp. But if this ball is initially going to be able to be zipped in, bang, through Redmond, then you're in trouble because Paul Gale will have to be face up against Gnabry 1v1 and Gnabry's probably going to win that 1v1 as he as he does so often. So the players position here are very good uh, this is what England will have to do um, and it really doesn't favour Germany that they want to pass the ball out here. So when they get this ball just show you so Kemp is going to just play this ball to the who what well, he's been doing so often in the in the championship so far. So when this pass comes in, you just see a little bit of pressure here from the attacking mid on his respective closest player. And the closest player then to Stark when he gets the ball past him is uh, is the left forward or the left wide forward is grey. So there's the ball right that we went to Stark and Stark hit that ball first time now initially what happens when that ball is hit straight away is Chilwell starts to engage right when Chilwell engages it's all about nearest man nearest man cover so nearest man nearest man cover so that's what's happening here Chilwell's going nearest man Moss is going to his nearest man and Baker's just covering the pass into uh, Weiser, which is uh, everything that you need to do. The whole team needs to shift across the pitch now to deny any space. Let me show you how that is done. So here you go, the ball goes out there to Toyan. The whole team here is shifting across here onto that um, 
making it about making about 40 40 yards maybe 30 yeah, 40 yards I'm not too sure depends on the size of the pitch but what you usually go off is the halfway line here the full back kind of in line with the uh, corner of the set of the uh, circle so that's what usually happens here and then once the uh, right back touches that ball now you have real pressure coming in you have that cover so that ball can't be played into um, Reeser because he has two men closing it from either side Chilwell's pressing the ball here from this angle and what you have here is kind of a decoy run from Gray Gray won't really press the ball uh, to create a Gagan press what he'll just do is he'll just offer this pass over a long one looped over uh, his head into the right centre back but it's a dummy run because he he's getting ready to, to um, engage if this ball goes back to start so let's see here how this plays out so as you see now Poyan has absolutely nowhere to go what you usually see here in in-game situations is Poyan might just play this ball off of Tilwell um, to force the ball out play it win a throw in for his team but let's just say for example and, and this is an example which is uh, which would be very stupid at, at a higher level but just for example purposes uh, Tolian receives this pass and he just decides to play a high one into his centre back just to return that ball because he's nowhere to go it's a stupid decision but he'll, he'll never make it you know Tolian he'll just play it off till well out for a throw or at least try to feed the ball out wide and, and we sir can make a diagonal into the channel to receive that so this is never going to happen in real life but I'm just showing you for example purposes each of these players for England is taking up a German man they're all taking their closest man and they're all doing it zonally that's the most important thing zonally okay so let's say Thiago or Tolian hits this pass over the star, over the top of Gray's head. Now, look at the pressure here. So, everyone's sinking back now around. You can see the arrows. This is where they're going. Back into the original shape where they were, where they were before. And, again, it's all about getting tight. When a risky pass is played, that's when you got to press. And this is what England are doing now. So, Swift is going to press on really tight up to the hood. And, um, Shalaba is going to press really tight to Max Meyer and uh, uh, Redmond has the job of trying to, to trying to cover two people what he does now in a moment I'll show you it's all about decision making at the last moment and explosiveness from Redmond but as you see each of these England players has their allocated um, marker in their zone and uh, they're marking them very tightly here. So the ball goes over the top of Gray's head into Star. And now you see they're all very tight here, especially initially. You know, Mawson doesn't have to get that tight to um, Kaiser. He just has to get ready if a long ball is played. So he's just dropping off. And um, you have kind of Baker just kind of shielding a pass you know it's unnecessary but he has to reposition reposition himself anyways uh, Chalab is tight and Swift is tight to um, the hood right centre mid zonally pressing on to uh, to Arnold as well so this is a uh, very good and they have them outnumbered in the middle of the pitch because look it's a four versus three in the middle of the pitch Meyer Meyer uh, the Hood and Arnold versus the, the England midfield four. So it's all about trying to expose the wide areas. You might not in the game you might not see Weiser uh, going out this wide. You may touch the go out to the touch line and create a two versus one out there. But this is the in game anyways. Um, so Stark's going to receive that pass there. And when he does receive this pass, Gray's going to put this pressure on. To play that ball first time, he can either play back to his goalkeeper, which is going to be a very hard pass to play in circumstances of a long pass coming back to you. He's going to have to lump it, 
or he's going to have to try and pass to the closest man. Redmond here has a decision to make and he has to make it as the ball is kicked. So when Starr kicks this pass to either the, the full back or the centre back, Redmond's now got to ex explode onto that player who's going to receive that ball. So this is what's going to happen. Starr hits that ball first time. Now Redmond is going to explode onto Kemp, the left centre back. Swift is straight onto the Hood's back to stop him turning if he were to receive a pass. And there you go. The ball's gone into Redmond now. And let's say Redmond's at full speed. Kemp's at a walking pace because, let's be fair, he's not running. Redmond is running. And uh, he's running onto that pass now. Intercepts. Kemp slow on the acceleration, for example. And now Redmond's got a 1v1. And uh, he gets the score. So that's that. That's how that plays out, lads. And uh, it's, a, it's a very dangerous situation for Germany to be in because, uh, because of the fact they can get outnumbered very easily. And getting outnumbered at this level is very, very common when you have that diamond in midfield with, with a highly structured team around it. And uh, that's the issue, isn't it? For Germany, the diamond is giving them problems because, especially when Wieser kind of tucks in now, because as you see here again, it's a four versus three here in the middle of the pitch. You know, um, typically what you really want from Gerhard is Gerhard to move up onto uh, the byline, um, kind of in parallel with Tolian. As Tolian gets up here, then you want Gerhard to move up and then you'd want Gnabry to kind of stay wide also and you'd want Weezer to, to stay wide too and that's what you might see from Germany unless they want to change their formation to uh, to accommodate the, the diamond which uh, which would also be a very good idea because you can go man for man all over the pitch and I'll show you how the diamond would look in game. Firstly, guys, let me just show you how I believe Germany can counteract that diamond while staying in this 4-2-3-1 shape because it is possible by using the fullbacks, which um, you uh, may get success with Tolian, who is more confident going forward, I believe, than Gerhard. So I'm going to show you an example now quickly of to. Poyan uh, getting forward with Visor created space from. So here we go, the English are assuming their diamond positions while Germany going into that usual 4 2 3 1, the hood dropping in as I showed you before, Arnold moving off. It's all the same as before so far. Now the next thing, this is the only this is the difference now. So as you see here, I've created two parallels, which means that out wide Instead of Gerhal hanging back while Toyan gets very high and Wieser cuts inside, Wieser actually stays wide now in parallel with Gnabry on the other side of the pitch. This stretches the um, back four for England in it, um, initially, but also getting those full backs up. And they are free guys. So they're going to be two free men on either side. They're expected to be covered by the two left centre mids now because the closest men to the full backs are the wingers. So the wide centre mids for England can't necessarily go out yet until the ball's played into their zone as we discussed before. A diamond shape usually involves zonal marking, especially with the wide midfielders. So there's the two split strikers, that's a three versus three in the initial part of the pitch. Let me just show you now the same zones. As before the only difference here is that with the, with the two parallels of the full backs and the um, wingers this really annoys the zone and marking of England as you see here especially with Arnold kind of occupying more Prouse Baker is free on this side but at the same time can't really drift out of that position out to 
um, pole yarn because weezer can easily get into this pocket. The same goes for Meyer, can drift in there. So that's a danger. Baker has to hold his position now in the center of the pitch and wait for that ball to be played out to pole yarn. So let me show you now how this might work. The two center backs split with the hood dropping in between the two center backs, something that you see quite often. Now, the hood is a brilliant pass from the ball, as I spoke to you before about. can pick that ball up with his back to play, turn into the game, and play lovely balls out to the full backs. Specifically good at playing balls out to uh, the right wing, because he's a right footer, is able to make in-swinging passes into the full back. So that could be an area of strength. So there we go. The ball goes out to... Um, Kemp was before he just plays it to the hood. Now because England or um, because Germany are sitting so deep, England don't really want to press on all that high. Although they may do. You can't be too aggressive with this, however, because the full backs will have a lot of space to run into. So England may be very aggressive. That means that it'll cost them a lot of energy, which they won't be able to maintain for 90 minutes. So sometimes in the game they're going to sit back and try to absorb some pressure. Here Germany are very deep and England are coming on to them. Now they can be aggressive and push on, but be reminded that if Gray and Redmond press on too soon, they're leaving the passing options short to the full backs open. Now a long over the top pass here into uh, Tolian's chest isn't really going to be too much of an issue because you know a long pass into a chest means that Baker or Gray can get out. So how can you make space for Polian? Well that's um, not simple but it, it, it will um, require some movement from the right winger to take Chilwell out of the wide area. So as you see Chilwell is marking um, Visa now one to one zonally, same goes for Gnabry. So these are um, very good and I think one of Weezer's strengths really is his off the ball running. So this particular set play could be effective. So what I'm going to ask Weezer to do is to make a diagonal run into the channel between the full back and the left centre back. And I'll show you that now. So this is what I want to happen. Weezer making an inroad in there. And that means that Chilwell has to follow him because if Chilwell lets him go, say for example, and the hood hits this pass, a David Luis esque pass into um, Visser, then um, the left centre back for England is going to have a massive problem at uh, Alfie Mawson there. So Chilwell is going to have to follow him in. And you see, the, the issue with this is that Tolian can now move up that line as Chilwell gets dragged inside. I want to show you that now. So as you see, the hood moving off into this channel uh, onto the right side of the pitch. Swift closing down that ball. He's the closest man in marking zonally. Gray blocking off the short pass into Tolian as we've seen before. But this time, he's unaware that the amount of space is being awarded to um, the, the overlapping full back. So this is the issue now as you see Visa coming in Chilwell getting dragged out of that area. Now he has to make a decision here whether to pass this on at this stage or to let it go. Now a good quality ball here is needed from the hood in swinger into the path of Polian who need a good touch to take it down. So this is what's going to happen. Hits that ball. Now a good quality ball here, just into the feet of Torian over the top. He's coming onto it now. Chilwell passes on the man onto Alfie Mawson. There you go. Now Mawson is up it against one diagonal runner. Selk has come out of nowhere now, making another diagonal run into that other channel, meaning that the two centre backs, the two versus two, now it's a three versus three with Torian on the run. Meyer comes over to join Baker now acting as a shield into that for that pass into Meyer. Chalaba is kind of left 
with a decision to make, should he go back, should he move out to uh, cover this inside. So we'll see what that what uh, unfolds here. Now, so what happens is a good touch from Tolian. And now, a good touch means that you're able to get the ball down really quick. And this is hopefully what Tolian can do. Um, Chilwell now is rushing out to Tolian. But we have Visa who's made that run inside. Now he can make a run into the channel with Selka also making a similar diagonal run into the near post. And Selk is just going to play that ball into him. And now it's a two versus two, or almost a two versus one, because Chambers is going to be taken out of the game. Selk is going to be on the full sprint, doesn't see him coming in. So needs good awareness from Chambers if he's going to defend this. Let's say, for example, purposes, he gets caught out by the set piece. And now they are in trouble. Mawson is isolated against the man in the box. Visser's good dribbler gets the touch under his belt and is going to clip that ball into Selka at the near post who can hopefully finish it off. So there you go lads, that's how one way you can expose this England diamond by using the full backs. Very important when you're using, uh, when the opposition are using a diamond, your full backs are able to attack because they are going to have a lot of space. And that is the key to defeating a diamond is using those fullbacks effectively and, and using your wingers to drag. And I think Fraser, this combination of Fraser and Tolian can do that in this game if um, Germany are to persist with that 4-2-3-1 um, shape. Obviously, if you go to a diamond, you can match England man for man. It's just the issue for Germany is that they don't have two really top quality strikers and that is an issue trying to decide who gets in the team. Let me show you what the diamond would look like, although I do believe it's very unlikely to be played by the Germans. I think you're going to stick to this 4-2-3-1 and use those full backs. But anyways, let's see the diamond now and how that will look if the Germans do play it. So this is what it will look like if Germany decide to go and match England in the formation with the 4-4-2 diamond. Now, in terms of personnel here, there's not really much that changes. The one that really gets dropped here is Fraser, who's the right winger normally for Germany. He's going to get dropped for Young, who's going to come in at defensive midfield, give them the hood and, and Ireland that little bit of protection. In behind. Jung has come on a lot as a sub for Germany this year in the European Championships. So he is a likely starter if Germany were to go to a diamond. He's a you know he's a big guy, he's physical and uh, he's very well suited to playing in that defensive midfield position because he can break the game up. Now what you have here is Gnabry. He has to come in almost and play as one of those strikers. Now he can drift wide obviously in this system and move on to Holger to get a 1 versus 1 or a 2 versus 1 with Gerhard if Gerhard gets up. Selke is going to play as the other striker obviously, Max Meyer in behind. The Hood now and Arnold are the two wider midfielders. I think Arnold may struggle here um, when he's asked to get out to the wider areas as I'm not not too sure on how um, how he'll deal with that athletically but in terms of a technical point of view he is a left foot, Kempf is left foot and Gerhard's left foot so that gives Germany some balance in this first two thirds of the pitch Gnabry is obviously used to playing on the left hand side so it will suit him to a certain extent all right footers here on this side as well with Meyer almost being able to use both foot so that's very good in terms of Germany uh, and their balance. So this is what it look like now. Let me just sort, sort out the formations here. So as you see now, they're going man for man all over the pitch. See how Gray and Redmond pull that bit wider. Of course, uh, Germany can do that also. So that's what it looks like. Now here we go. This is the fun part. This is um, the zones here that Germany or England use against this Germany formation 
So it's man for man all over the pitch, as you can see here. And what that forces, lads, is it forces individual battles to happen. So, for example, the who would be one versus one against Baker. If he beats Baker, then, you know, he's going to have a run on at the English team. You know, Young is going to be playing against one versus one against the attacking midfield and John Swift, and so on and so forth. So, it's one versus one all over the pitch. You know, you either win your individual battle or you don't. And it's a case of who wins the most individual battles if Germany goes to this sort of a system. The only um, issue for Germany, really, or for England, is that Germany are more technically gifted, I do believe. I think they have an ability to play the ball. A lot of these lads are playing at a very high standard. If you look at the hood, he's got a transfer now to Dortmund after playing a terrific season at Munch and Gladbach. If you look at Meyer, one of Europe's most talented prospects for the last number of years playing for Schalke. You know, Gnabry, big, big world star almost going, he's going to Bayern. So these lads really are playing at a good level. And with the English team, Ward Prowse is, is technically gifted, so is Redmond. The rest of the lads are really substitutes for their teams or playing at a lower level. So oh, Chambers there as well. Obviously, going back to Arsenal, he'll be loaned out again, I'd say. So, from a technical point of view, um, I think Germany may win in some areas and England may win. So, it'll be a very interesting game if Germany do decide to play a 4 4 2 diamond and match England. Now, with Damari Gray, obviously, uh, he hangs out wide, obviously, to start at the fullback, to cover the fullback initially, then they can press in. That's why he's starting so wide. The same way Redmond, he, he just blocks the pass as Jirhal. Once this pass goes into Kent, he just presses. And that just stops the pass initially, going out to the fullbacks and hurting England in the wide areas. Chilwell is always ready here in his zone to go out and press Tolian, and Holgate's always ready to go out and press Jirhan if they manage to pass into their zones. So it's an interesting battle here if, if Germany do decide to go with a diamond, although maybe unlikely in the circumstances, but something that needs to be looked at anyways. Now one last thing here that England can do is um, if Germany persists with a 4-2-3-1, I'm going to show you what England might do. So just going back to the 4-2-3-1 for Germany, as we discussed before, these fullbacks were really, really an issue, as we said, you know, when you have those two parallels with the wingers and fullbacks, it's a bit of an issue for England to get out to those, especially when you when you press three on to try and press the centre backs. Because you're asking Redmond and Gray to do two jobs. So it's rather difficult for them, as you can imagine, to mark two people at one time. And another thing to note there, lads, really is when pressing the ball, Redmond is very unsure what to do because he doesn't know whether to run directly at the ball or should he should he run at an angle, stop the pass going on to Gerhard and then leave the centre of the pitch open. So Redmond's kind of confused what to do here so it's a very difficult situation for him and for Gray if this um, is on the other side because you're trying to mark two people and you're trying to pa um, protect the pass into one player and then you're trying to press another so not a nice thing to do if you're a centre forward or a striker because you really are wasting unnecessary energy on trying to press two people and trying to cover two people. So that's one thing I have to say there about Redmond and, and the difficulty he has in this um, particular play. Presses here had. Then the ball can always go back to Kemp or back to Polserbeck who the goalkeeper can 
always play it out to that free fullback. As you see, Redmond's getting sucked into the ball, for an example. And, you know, then the, the fullback is free, you know, which is an issue. Gray has this fullback covered because he's halfway in between the two. But, you know, he's essentially marking two people. So the ball goes back to the goalkeeper. And now the keeper's going to hit that ball out to the free fullback because Redmond's been dragged out of space because England are trying to press on to the centre backs. So the ball goes out to Girahan. Now you see the England team, all the arrows here are moving out to this side. The white indicates the ball's trajectory. So the ball goes out here, out to Girahan. And as you see England moving out to that side of the pitch, now the marking has changed. Where Ward Prowse is in the zone is um, zonally marking Gerhal, so he has to press out there. A lot of running for Ward Prowse to do, while Shelba, the defensive mid, just comes in and protects in around and zonally marks Arnold. So that's the next thing to note. Obviously, the centre mid coming out to press the ball here, while Holgate takes up Gnabry in his zone. And then the ball. Comes to Girahal, so then you realise, oh wait, now Arnold's dropping short, so does Ward Prowse decide to keep pressing and let Shalaba um, take up Arnold and leave space here for Chilwell to deal with where Meyer is, or, or does Ward Prowse try and follow the pass into Arnold to stop him getting it short? So it's a lot of confusion there anyways. Um, Girhal has a number of options here straight away. So these are the options now. As you see, with Selka making a diagonal run, you have Gnabry coming short, just finding space in a pocket there where Shalaba is worried about. That's why he does not go out and press Arnold here because he's worried about Gnabry in the pocket. Holgate now, because... War Prowse is gone trying to shield the pass into Arnold. Hall gets going out to press the ball. Also leaves that gap there if, if Gnabry wants to get in there. So there's a really good ball down that line for both players. Two versus one there against Chambers. And then the next option obviously is to go short to Arnold. And Arnold turn and hit the opposite fullback who's not being marked. Because Gray doesn't hook around. He presses on to the centre back. Which is an issue. So... In this instance, what we're going to see is the ball just going to Arnold, who takes that ball. Now Baker has to press the man in his zone. Shalaba goes short onto Gnabry, and the ball can be taken by Arnold into feet, and Arnold can turn out and hit this pass out onto his fullback who will be making a run into this area and Arnold will feed him into space. But Gray now has to get back in around onto Tolia and there's a lot to ask of him. And as I mentioned before, takes up a lot of energy. So Arnold turns there anyways and plays this pass straight out onto Tolia and now he's free. So what we had there in that play, lads, was two of the fullbacks being free at all times. And... Uh, Getting forward, causing Germany um, to be able to expose the England formation. So England may need to change the formation to accommodate the Germans, especially because they're technically gifted players. Let me show you now how Germany may accommodate that English diamond, or or how England. So. Let me show you now how England may accommodate that Germany 4 2 3 1 shape. And um, it does involve changes in personnel, so let me show you that now. Okay, so instead of the English actually playing with a diamond, what they could do to take care of the issue where the fullbacks are getting free is actually go with a 4-5-1 or a 4-1-4-1 with um, Damari Gray playing left mid and Redmond on the right. Tammy Abraham also would be able to come into this system and act as a target man for them 
able to hold up the ball while the midfielders Ward, Prowse and Baker get up in support and uh, the wingers also come in for support. So this system wouldn't be a bad idea for England given the concept of what Germany could do and what they could expose in that England team. Also, you would be able to get the goal scorer in Tammy Abraham and, and play him up front on his own, use his best traits and really get the best out of him in this stage of the competition. Sometimes you do need a hold up striker in these types of games and Abraham would be perfect for that. He also is well able to play up there on his own with the wingers, Remnant and Gray, able to get up with support. So I, I think this myself is a, is a very good system because it allows Gray and Redmond to get forward and, and Chilwell also, Taliban can provide some protection. But let's just have a look again at how England will defend. So here we go, the Germans are assuming their 4-2-3-1 with the hood dropping in short and Arnold playing off either side again on the left here. So this is what's going to happen. The English are going to press their 4-5-1 up onto that halfway line. Gray and Redmond on the halfway line. Baker and Ward Prowse just inside the circle and probably just inside the corner of it so that means that Chalaba can play directly in line with the halfway line along with Tammy Abraham this is a great system to absorb some pressure and really does eliminate the space in the center of the pitch look at the outnumbering here in the middle with the five versus two Okay, the wide areas are now taken care of because you have a two versus two out here and a two versus two out here as well. It keeps Germany on their goal side of England and that's exactly what England wants. They want the game to be going on ahead of them. And I think this is perfect, this system for England because of those two wingers because they are typically able to counter-attack. So if they're quick players, they're energetic, and if they get a counter, they will rip teams apart, particularly Nathan Redmond. With the passing ability of Ward Prowse, they could really take the, the game to them, because Chilwell and Holgate are attacking fullbacks also, who can get up and support that counter-attack too. So think of the possibilities here that England do have if they decide to soak up some pressure by Germany. And this is what I think they may do if they decide to straight away from that diamond shape. So here we go. What they have an option of doing England really is they can either go zonally or man for man in midfield with a protector and Abraham coming short onto the defensive mid, which is what I prefer having a protection mechanism in here in the defensive mid Chalaba. So when the ball is going to get played out to Jirhan, Chalaba is going to come in and um, protect that half space which Meyer could get in, Salka could get in, Gnabry could get in. So protecting that half space is Shalaba with Baker zonally marking the hood, the hood who's not in his zone currently. Currently it's actually in Abraham's zone closest man. So Baker has no one to mark here. Gray is fixated to Tolian but he is marking his zone, doesn't go out there, keeps the width just outside of that halfway circle and this is the most important thing really is um, getting that Chalaba in them half spaces with the man for man you can see Ward Prowse man for man with Arnold Holgate man for man with Gnabry and Redmond man for man with Sheer Hat look the centre backs here aren't under pressure like they were before with Redmond and Gray pressing onto them but now you're really eliminating the passes onto the full backs and eliminating the threat through the middle of the pitch as well. So this is a very good formation to switch to given the personnel that England do have to offer. Now the pop pass is being played out from Kemp into his left back 
and England are shifting across onto that side to keep the width nice and compact. So what does this do here? It means that Ward Prowse can press on to his man Redmond can go out here to Zierhan and Folger can get tight onto Gnabry. Now so this is what happened, Chalaba is in here in the half space, protecting anything short that may come through. If Gnabry picks up the ball and cuts inside of Holgate, he's doubled up because uh, Chalaba can give him support. That goes for if Gnabry receives this ball and goes out wide, Chalaba goes out to support him and double up on the man, which is perfect because you need someone to double up on Gnabry. He is a terrific dribbler. So... Shalva would be able to do that and he has the energy to help Paul get out. Um, so that's great now and that will go for the other side as well. With Visa and Tolian, Shalva will give support to Gray and Chilwell out there also. So he is well able to do that. Baker comes in around to cover for Ward Prowse and blocking that pass into Mayer who needed to be covered because... Chalaba went in to protect the half space. Gray comes in around just inside of that uh, corner of the halfway circle. Now, and they're nice and compact in there. So the pressure coming on to the fullback. Now he has to play back his centre half. And you see the way Abraham is on the goal side or the left side of the hood, if you want to call it that. And that just means that Kemp is afraid to play this pass into the hoop when he received this pass because Abraham can cut across and um, intercept. So Kemp will have to pass back to his goalkeeper, hopefully is what's going to happen, while England readjust their positions. So the pass back to the goalkeeper will allow England to readjust. And I'll show you that now. And it goes back to the goalkeeper, Abraham, obviously giving that threat there and to get across the hoop. Now, the next thing that England can actually do from here is they can employ a high press, which I won't show you at the moment. Um, but what it really is all about is getting that team back into their original shape. Nate Redmond will tuck in there into his original shape and... Um, what England can do from here is they can press on their players now in a in a in the way that they were before, but that's only if they want to, and this can also mean that you know if things go wrong, they can just sit back and absorb pressure in this shape. They can squeeze up the pitch but maintain this shape and just make sure that the passes don't get out onto those fullbacks. So that is a very good system to play there from England. Lads, that is all I'm going to show you today on, on this video. I want to make a quick prediction for this game in a moment. So give me a moment and we go over to the prediction. So this, lads, is my predictions for the game. I think that the game will go to extra time. I think it'll be a very, very close game. And I say you're going to see a lot of both teams cancelling each other out. Next, I think the game's going to be decided by a set piece or a penalty. At any stage, I am aware and you are aware of how good of a crosser James Ward-Prowse is for England. Absolutely fantastic set piece taker. And someone who really can cause problems for the Germans. On the other hand, you have Max Arnold, who isn't a bad set-piece taker himself. And Germany really do have some excellent players to get on the end of those set-pieces, like Kemp, and Stark, Selke, and England have Chambers and Mawson. I think the most likely goal scorer in this game is Alfie Mawson because I just think he's a big brute of a lad and to, to be honest, getting on the end of one of James Ward Prowse's set pieces, he is very likely to attack it and he has a good header on him. 
you know, he doesn't score many goals, but I, you know, it's either going to be one of those centre backs for England. I think that's really going to win a set piece of corner more than likely, and you're going to have either Chambers or Mawson attacking that corner and scoring a goal. Same goes for the Germans with Stark and Kempf. So that's the predictions, lads. Whether I get them right or not, I don't know. I can't see into the future. But anyways, there's a brief of what I believe is going to happen. And hopefully you all enjoyed the video. Thanks very much.